Good day, grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. Um, in this lesson, we're going to carry on with circle geometry. We're going to use all the theorems we've learned so far. And hopefully, if we get far enough, we're going to learn another theorem. And then we're going to apply it. What I would like to do by Friday, if possible, is I'm going to see if my boss will help me do it. I'm going to put a questionnaire onto um, the system so that you guys can go through it um, over the weekend. It'll be like a multiple choice questionnaire, but um, basically you will have to work out the answers and then decide what which answer is correct in the multiple choice. And I would like you to do that because then what happens is I get out not who did what. I just get out a results, analysis results of what your answers were. In other words, where you got something right or something wrong. And that will help me see which sections of the circle geometry you might still be struggling on. Um, and then I can focus on those questions or those sections. And we can also address the questions that I asked you in the thing. So basically it's like a mini test, but it's not really a test because it's a worksheet and it's online. But please, I'm asking you nicely, don't guess, okay? If you don't know an answer, work it out and try your very best to get the correct answer out. Um, because obviously if you guess and you guess right, then I'm going to get skewed answers, okay? So then I won't let you guys don't understand it. So try and work it out. You can work it out with your friends. You can work it out with your teacher even. That's fine. I just want to see that you guys are working through it. And if, obviously it would be better if you didn't work it through it with your teacher because the whole point of this is for us to see where you guys are still struggling and then we can aim for questions with those sections. Okay, so let's get started. Um, again, I'd like to encourage you to join the grade 12 mathematics class so that you can ask me questions. Um, so let's do this. Okay, so we've got a question. It's again circle geometry, surprise, surprise. And we have a triangle inside our circle. Here is our triangle. We've got P, E, and D. We have an angle of 40 degrees, and they're telling us that this line, P, E, is equal to this line, D, P. Okay, they're telling us that. They also have given us a tangent a, P, C, okay? And they obviously want us to find out what are the values of X and Y. Okay, so as I said before, if I was teaching you this normally in class, what I would do is I would say to you, right guys, what do you think? And give you a little bit of time to work through this by yourselves before we at attacked it. But obviously the format in this lesson doesn't work like that. So I'm gonna start straight away, but I'm gonna work through it slowly. So if you work ahead of me, that's fine too. And what you need to do is you need to, if you didn't get it or didn't understand, you need to watch the recording of this lesson. You just press on the same link that you press on to get here in the first place. And then you can go and see what you did wrong or right, etc. Um, and also feel free to come back to these questions and do the same thing again. Okay, so here is our circle. And like I said, we are trying to find the values of X and Y. So we've been given this triangle, which is obviously an isosceles triangle, which means that the base angles of the isosceles triangle are equal. And for some reason, my pen's not writing. It's weird. Okay, so, okay. So what we need to do is we need to realize that this year is equal to that, okay? So that is equal to that. So that is going to be giving us 40 and 40. Oh, the nib of my pen just disappeared. Okay, I'll make a plan, don't worry about it. Okay, so that angle there is equal to that angle. They're not equal to 40 degrees at all. They're equal to the base angles have to add up with the bottom angle to 180 degrees, right? So this angle here plus that angle there plus that angle have to add up to 180 degrees, right? So now for this lesson, I'll be drawing with my mouse. So this is going to be interesting. So you just need to bear with me. Okay, right. So do you agree that then we're going to say that this is 180? Oh, that's terrible. Minus bracket 40 and 40. Okay, so let's not do that. So this is going to be 40 
and then we have to divide by 2. So 180 minus 40 is going to equal 140. 140. And then we need to divide that by 2, and that is going to be equal to 70. Okay, grade 12s. This is ridiculous. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go get my spare digital pen and pad. It's upstairs. Um, so what I want you to do is, it'll take me a minute and a half to get it. I want you to try this question by yourselves. And when I get back, I'll go through it with you. Hold on. Right, and I'm back. Oi, the joys of live recording. Okay, and I have my wonderful new spare, well, new, new, new old <laughs> spare digital pen and pad. Right, so let's have a look at this. So what we said was, and I'm sorry, I'm a bit out of breath. I just climbed three flights of stairs, and yes, I'm unfit. Okay, right, so we've got that this is got to be a triangle, right? And altogether, the angles in the triangle add up to 180 degrees, but this is an isosceles triangle. So that means that the base angles are equal, which means we can say, horrible handwriting, 180 minus 40 divided by 2 is going to be 140 over 2, which is 70 degrees. Okay, so that means that that is 70 degrees and that there is 70 degrees. Why is that important? Because we're trying to get X and Y, and we've just recently learned the theorem that says that if you draw a tangent, oh, I'll try again. If you draw a tangent to a point, then do you agree that that angle there, the angle between the tangent and the chord, is equal to the angle subtended by that chord? So therefore, we can say that X is going to be equal to angle D. Okay, so what I've forgotten to do in my haste to solve this problem is I've forgotten to give reasons. So I can say that angle D, okay, so it would be A, P, D, E. So it would be P, D, E is equal to P, E, D, which would be base angles of triangle, okay? Then I can say that angle X equals 70 degrees. And what's nice about this is you can just call it the tan chord, just call it tan chord because that's the tan chord theorem. We're saying that this angle here is between the tangent and the chord is equal to the angle subtended by that chord, which is going to be 70. Now, to get Y, there are two easy ways to do it. You can say, well, this is 70 and that's 40. So therefore, this angle here has to be 70 because I'm a straight line. So you could say that Y is 70 degrees and you could just say straight line or you could write supplementary. Or you could realize that what they're really trying to aim at is that you know that that 
and that actually also are the tan chord theorem because this is the tangent and that's the chord and they're both subtending point E. So you could say also equals 70 degrees tan chord. There you go. Okay, not too bad here. Right, let's move on. Right, now the next theorem that I want to teach you is that two tangents to a circle drawn from the same point are equal in length. So you've got some random point B and you draw a line from B so that it is a tangent to the circle here. And you take another line and you draw it from B to again the tangent to that same circle. Then these two lines are equal. Okay, and we're going to prove it to you. Okay, so again, if you want to do a proof, what do we need to do? We need to write down what we're given. So we say given. We're given circle O. Okay, we are given tangent, or we could say, sorry, line AB with A tangent. Okay, we'll tangent A, and we've got line B, C, um, tangent at C. Okay, and we aren't given these two lines, they're not really there. So we have to prove, required to prove, that A, B equals B, C. A, B equals B, C. We don't need to prove this, that A, B is equal to B, C. So in order to do this, we're actually going to use congruency. 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 Okay, so here we go. Construction. We need to draw constructions because in order to do congruency, we need triangles. So what we're going to do is we're going to join AO and we're going to join OC. We're going to join AO. We're going to join OC and we're going to join OB. OB. So do you agree that now we've got two triangles? We've got triangle A, O, B, and C, O, B. Okay, so now we're looking for congruency because that is the only way we can prove that A, B is equal to C, B. So we're going to say in triangle, now remember that we have to always get these in the right order. And the easy way to think of this is that this is a radius and that's also a radius. Okay, this line is common, okay, but do you agree that this is 90 degrees because that is the radius and that is a tangent and we know that therefore that is 90 degrees and this is 90 degrees. So if I wanted to, I could go from the center of the circle to the tangent to the point. So I need to do exactly the same thing from here. I'm going to go from the center of the circle to the tangent to the point. So I'm going to go in triangle O, A, B and triangle center the circles O C B but I, the reason I pointed out that these were radii and that it was right angle is because you could also think that I'm going radius 90 degrees random line radius 90 degrees random line okay you need to put these triangles in the same order if you put them in the same order then it'll be easy to prove that they're congruent okay so then do you agree that OA is equal to OA, I mean OC, OC. Why? Because they are radii. Okay, that's pretty easy, right? So these are equal. Okay, I'm just going to do it in a different color so you don't get confused. Um, let's get rid. So these are radii and they're equal, right? Do you agree that angle C equals angle A because of the fact that the radius and the tangent are always 90 degrees to each other. So we can say that angle OAB is equal to angle OCB which is 90 degrees 
And you could say, well, that's pretty obvious because it's radii is perpendicular to the tangent. Okay. And then do you agree we've got OB is common? OB is equal to OB because it's common. So then we can say that this triangle is definitely congruent with this triangle because we've got a right angle, we've got the hypotenuse, and we've got a side. So therefore we can say, therefore triangle OAB is congruent to triangle OCB. Why? Right angle hypotenuse side. Right angle hypotenuse side. Yay. And therefore, therefore, AB has to equal CB. And if you look, the reason that I'm so strenuously keen for you guys to do these in the right order is if you look at this is AB and this is CB. So you're reading off from those triangles. So it's, even if I couldn't see the triangle, I could tell you that OB is going to equal to OB, common, obviously. Um, OA is going to equal to OC and AB is equal to CB. Why? Because we've written this in the right order. So therefore, it is going to be correctly, it can be relatively correct. Okay, so yay, we've given the proof. Now we're going to use this proof and guys, you need to learn this proof, NB. Okay, there is a thing that you guys need to make sure you've got, okay? And it is basically your exam guideline. And there's another thing, which is the CAPS document. The CAPS document. And if you don't have it, okay, you need to go and find it on the internet, download it, get it. I will see if I can get it uploaded onto the Turnable platform for you as well. But these things here are very important because they tell you, first of all, what is in the curriculum. And secondly, they give you your what is examinable within the curriculum because sometimes what's in the curriculum is not always examinable. So you need to check both of these documents. Why is my saying that's important? Because within this document, it tells you exactly which theorems are required for you to prove. Okay, there's some theorems you don't have to prove. There are others that you have to prove. And this is one of the ones that you have to prove. And like I've said in the previous lessons, I'm only demonstrating the proofs of the ones that you have to be able to do in the exams. So let's now look at an example. Okay, so this these examples are mixed examples. They're going to be using everything that we have learned so far. Okay, so we want to find out what the value of x is. So immediately we can see, well, since we've just learned that this is a tangent and this is a tangent, it's coming from a common point, we know that these lines are equal. Okay. Now, we also know that that is a diameter and angles in a semicircle are right angles. Okay. Hmm, so what else could we do with this? What else could we do? We also know that the angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the opposite angle. In other words, in other words, this angle here, there's the tangent, there's the chord, that there is the chord, would equal this angle here on the opposite side. Okay, so therefore do you agree that that is 65 degrees? Okay, and then it's easy because then we've got our triangle. So that's kind of how I do these questions. I must admit, I tend to first see what I can find out and if I can see any numbers and everything else and then work my way backwards because sometimes there's a heck of a lot of information like for the fact, like the fact that this is a 90 degree angle that's useless to us. It doesn't make a difference whatsoever, okay? And that means that I know that, but it doesn't help me in my proof, okay? So let us now use what we've just worked out to solve this, okay? So do you agree we can say PBA, PBA is equal to X? 
I mean, is equal to 65 degrees. Sorry, I was thinking about the fact that I'm now writing these as PBAs. And remember I said to you that I was trying to learn to teach myself to write it as PBA, okay? But I have changed to this for the simple reason that when I was going to look for questions to give you guys as examples, I went to the supplementary exam from for this year to take examples out of those exam papers and all of them are using this way to write the angles. So it seems like that even though the CAPS document says that they want us to use this, this is fully acceptable, which is great for me because I like writing it like this. If however you prefer writing your angles like this, that's fine too. So I will be writing my angles like this. Okay, so we got PBA is equal to 65 degrees. Why? Tan chord, you don't have to write the words theorem, it's obvious, okay, so we know that that's 65 degrees. We know that angle PAB is also 65 degrees, okay, we know that angle PAB is also 65 degrees, why? It's base angles of isosceles triangle, base angles of the isosceles triangle, and you don't have to tell them that AP is obviously then equal to PB because that tells you that. Therefore, we can say that X is going to be 180 degrees minus 65 degrees plus 65 degrees, which is 180 degrees minus 130 degrees, which is 50 degrees, and that is angle sum of triangle. Okay, so that really was just giving us an example of how you could combine your two theorems where you've got the tan chord theorem and you've got the theorem which states that if you take two tangents from a point then that these two lines are going to be equal. Okay, let us look at another example. So now, again, circle geometry, we've got a little circle, we've got a point here, E, we've got F, and because I want to put reasons in, I'm just going to put A letters here, so that's A, O, let's give that B, C, and D, okay. So obviously they want us to find let little letters E, D, E, F, and G, okay. So generally, if they give you a question like this, the order in which they give ask you to do the question, the, the letters or the angles, is usually the order which is going to make it the easiest to find, okay? So in other words, they're not going to expect you to find angle F or G without finding angle D first because of the order. And similarly, in other questions, if they ask you to find angle M1 and then M3, that the reason they're doing that is because they think you need M1 to find M3. Okay, I get it. So let's look at this. First of all, we know from the theorem we've just proven that since DC is a tangent and BC is a tangent, these two lines are equal. Therefore, D is going to be 65 degrees because it's the base angle of an isosceles triangle. So we can say D equals 65 degrees. Why? base angle of isosceles triangle, okay? So now we know that that's 65 degrees. Now they're asking us for E, E, okay? So obviously we need to think about the fact that we probably need to use our D to get to the E. And if you look carefully, you can see, well, that's a tangent over there. That's a chord over there, therefore, and that chord subtends angle E, therefore we can say that angle E is also 65 degrees. Why? Because of the tan chord theorem. So angle E is 65 degrees. Why? Because of the tan chord theorem. Okay, then they want angle F, but angle F is at the center of the circle and angle E is at the circumference. So angle F is going to be two times 65 degrees. Why? Because this is angle at center equals two times the angle 
at the circumference. Okay, remember that theorem ages ago. So this here is 130 degrees, 130 degrees. And finally, we need to work out G. Okay, and all we're going to do with working out G is we're going to think about what we have here. Okay, do you agree that's 130 degrees? Then let me change colors so you can see what I'm doing. We need to somehow relate G to F and to D and to our initial angle, okay? And there is no proof that says that this thing here is a cyclic quad. If it was a cyclic quad, then it would be really easy because we could say, well, obviously we know specific things about cyclic quad angles and therefore we knew what the angle G was, okay? Um, so what we need to think about, obviously opposite angles of cyclic quad are supplementary. So um, if this was a cyclic quad, we'd have the value of G straight away, okay? But we don't know that. But we do know that OB is a radius and OD is a radius. So do you agree that I could get this angle here and that angle here? because we've got this 180 and these are base angles of an isosceles triangle. So I could get that angle and that angle. Then I have the whole of F, I have the whole of this angle, the whole of this angle, which means that I can use the fact that all four angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360 and I can get G. Okay, so let's do that. So we can say, well, this year is going to be going to be OBD, angle OBD is equal to angle ODB, ODB, which equals 180 minus 130 over 2. And the reason is base angles of isosceles triangle. 180 minus 130 is 50 divided by 2, which is 25 degrees. So this little angle here is 25 degrees and that little angle there is 25 degrees. Okay, awesome. So now I've got 130, 25, 65, 25, 65, I can get G. So let's just change color again because I'm really getting irritated with this light blue. So we can say little g is equal to 360 degrees minus bracket 130 plus 65 plus 25 plus 65 plus 25. And now I am going to get out my calculator. There we go. And we're going to go 130 plus 65 plus 65 plus 25 plus 65 plus 25 equals 310. So therefore this is 360 degrees minus 310 degrees, which equals 50 degrees. So G equals 50 degrees. And what's interesting about that is that we've actually just proven that this blue quadrilateral is actually a cyclic quad because the opposite angles of the cyclic quad are supplementary because 25 and 65 is 90 and that is obviously 90 by the way because that is a radius and that's a tangent so that's 90 and that's 90 there so you didn't have to work that out it's just another extra thing so then you could say well obviously then this thing here is a cyclic quad and therefore the angle there is 50 degrees Okay, so you either had to look at that or you could realize that this is a cyclic quad or you first had to prove it a cyclic quad to realize that this is 50 degrees. Right, now let's move on to the next question. Okay, so now we've got a circle. We have a line going from A through the center of the circle, past it. We have X, okay, and do you agree that this is the tan chord theorem? So therefore we can say that that is X. 
and we have a point P and we've got two tangents A at A and at B so obviously then we can work out 50 degrees because these I mean we can work out what X is because these two lines are equal in length okay so now that we've thought through what we're going to do let's write it down okay so do you agree that angle A B P A B P equals X Y because of the fact that it's an tan chord theorem okay so that's x we also know that that equals p a b p a b why because it's the base angles of the isosceles triangle so then we can work out what X is because we can say, well, then for we've got 180 degrees minus 50, okay, is equal to 2X. How do I get that? Because this year plus those two have to add up to 180 degrees. So do you agree that we've got 130 degrees is equal to 2X? Therefore, X is going to be 65 degrees and you need to write over here angle sum of triangle, the angle sum of the triangle. Okay, you're quite welcome to write the other way. You could have said, well, I can work out that this is 65 degrees and this is 65 degrees and then obviously this is 65 degrees because of the tan chord theorem. It doesn't matter which order you write it in as long as it makes logical steps, okay? It doesn't matter whether you go forwards or backwards to get there. Right, let's do another example. Okay, now this is a typical exam question example. So we're gonna go through it and we're gonna go through it nice and slowly. And you will notice that they've kind of cheated. They've used numbers two and three here as well as X, Y's and Z's. So what they're really saying is that this is angle B3 and this is angle B2, okay? So it says O is the center of the circle above, sorry. Okay, and MPT is a tangent. MPT is a tangent. Also, OP is perpendicular to MT. How nice are they telling you this? Because you should have worked it out for the simple reason that that is the theorem that states that the angle between the radius and the tangent is 90 degrees because they are perpendicular. And it says determine with reasons angles X, Y, and Z. Okay. Well, if this whole angle here is 90 degrees, right? And this little bit is 64 degrees, what is X? Well, obviously X is going to be 90 degrees minus 64 degrees, okay? Which is what? It is 26 degrees. And why could we say? We could say it's complementary. Complementary, remember, means that that adds up to 90 degrees. And why is that? Because they told us that OP was perpendicular to MT, so we didn't have to tell them that. Okay, so this is 26 degrees. Can we get Y? Hmm. Well, what do we know about O? We know that O is the center of the circle. So therefore, do you agree that OP and OB are radii, so these two are equal. So do you agree that that means that I could get this B2 because that would be a base angle of an isosceles triangle. And then we can use the angle sum of triangle to get Y. Okay, I've just realized there's another way you can do this as well, which we'll go through in a minute. Okay. Okay, so if we do that, let's do that, that first, and then I'll show you the other way. So if we do that, we can say, well, angle B2 is also 26 degrees because it's the base angle of an isosceles triangle. Therefore, Y is going to be 180 degrees minus 26 plus 26 
which equals 180 degrees minus 54 degrees, which is going to be what? Well, 4 from 10 is 6 and 5 from 7 is 2, so that there is 126 degrees. So y is 126 degrees. And then we can get z because we can say, well, z is going to be the angle, is going to be the angle at the center is twice the angle of circumference. So therefore, we could say, sorry, this is 52 and that's 128. Makes my life much better. Sorry, it was worrying me. So we could say that z is half of y because the angle of the center is twice the angle of the circumference. So we could say, well, we've got 128 divided by 2 is 64 degrees. And why? Because the angle at center equals 2 times the angle at the circumference. Okay. Now, I said to you that generally the way they ask you to do these X, Y, and Z with reasons means that they want you to do it in that order. And they did actually want you to do it in order. They actually would have allocated marks according to this. But there is a shortcut that we could have used and I want to show you quickly. So let's just erase all this writing. Okay, and then get a color. So we worked out that this angle here was what? 26 degrees, right? Does it matter? I'm just finding out that X is 26. We know that X is 26. We also know that this is a tangent and that's a chord. So do you agree we can immediately say, well, in that case, angle Z is 64 degrees. Why? Because the tan chord theorem. Angle Z is subtended by BP, which makes an angle of 60 degrees with the tangent. So I could say, well, so an X would be normal. X is equal to 26 degrees, Y complementary. Right? But then I could go straight on to Z and say Z was equal to 64 degrees, Y, the tan chord theorem. And then I could say, well, y is obviously double that because it's at the angle at the center of the circle. So that's 128 degrees. So then I say, well, y is equal to 128 degrees and it would be angle at center equals two times the angle at circumference. So you can see that that's actually much quicker way of doing that. But it doesn't matter which way you go as long as you get it right. Okay. Right, another typical exam question. We've been given AB is equal to AC. AB, the whole of this, is equal to the whole of this, AC. They also tell us that AP is parallel to BC. So AP is parallel to BC. And they tell us that angle A2, this little angle here, A2, is equal to B2. Okay. Now they're asking us to prove um, that PAL is a tangent to triangle ABC or circle ABC. Okay, so they're saying they want us to prove that this is a tangent. So let's think about this. What do we know about tangents? We know that they make 90 degrees with the diameter radius, but we don't have a diameter radius, yeah? Or we know that if we've got a tangent and a circle, then we've got the tan chord theorem that this angle will equal that angle there. Okay. So do you agree I'm going to let B2 equal X, okay, right? And we know therefore that A2 is equal to X, right? We also know because of alternate angles that this little angle here is X because these two lines are parallel. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is prove that A1 is equal to the whole of B2. 
one and two, or I need to prove that A3 is equal to the whole of C. Do you see that? We've got PAL, and we want to prove, let me change it to a different color so you can see what I'm trying to prove. We need to prove that either that A1 is equal to the whole of this, or we need to prove, change color again. Ah, sorry. This angle is equal to this angle, yeah. Okay, so what do we have? We've got that B2 is equal to A2, but it's also equal to P. We know that, okay, we know that B2 is equal to A2 because they gave it to us. Okay, right. But they also told us that AB is equal to AC. So we know that this line here is equal to this line. So do you agree that C is equal to B1 plus 2? Okay, so I can say that angle C is equal to angle B1 plus B2, the whole of it. Okay, that is equal to that. Right? And why is that? Because there are base angles, base angles of an isosceles triangle okay we also know that we can work out what c is then because we can say well c angle c is going to be 180 degrees minus x over 2. so c is 180 degrees minus x over 2. just putting it out there right okay now, what else can we do? Let's think about this a little bit. We know that this is parallel. So do you agree that that means that this angle here, A1, is alternate to C, right? There it is. Let me try and draw it in for you. There it is. So therefore, A1 is equal to 180 minus x over 2 as well okay so a1 is equal to 180 minus x over 2 why because they're alternate angles and we don't need to write what's parallel because they gave it to us there's only one pair that's parallel okay but 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 a1 is equal to B1 plus B2, okay, because angle C is equal to B1 plus B2, okay, right, but they follow the tan chord theorem, okay, therefore we can just prove that PAL is a tangent to circle ABC. Okay, did I confuse you with that? Maybe I did. Let me just erase everything and then just show you what I did. Okay, so let's erase all ink and then change to different color. Okay, what I said was that we know that this is X and we know that that is X and that really doesn't help us at the moment. But what we do know is that this line here is equal to this line here. Right, which means that this angle here has to equal that angle there, right? So we can say that angle C is equal to angle B1 plus B2. Why? Because they are base angles of a triangle, right? But because this is parallel to this, I can say, well, and it doesn't matter which one, which one you do, but I'm just doing this one. I can say angle C is equal to angle A1. Why? Because they're alternate angles. There's my Z, yeah? You go, yeah, there it goes long and comes along there. So that's my Z. So this angle is equal to this angle, right? But we've just said that C equals B1 and plus B2. So therefore we can say that angle A1 is equal to angle B1 plus B2. 
But that obeys the tan chord theorem because if this was a tangent, because this would be the tangent, that would be chord, and then that would be the angle it subtends. So it says, but, okay, that obeys the tan chord theorem. Okay, therefore we can say, therefore we can say that PAL is a tangent to circle ABC. Okay, right, and we've run out of time. So what I'd like to do is I would like to suggest to you guys, if you do have time tonight, to go and look at this question, maybe take a screenshot of just this question and try this bit, proving that AB, A, B, B is a tangent to circle ADP. In other words, they're saying, let's pretend, I'm just going to erase everything quickly. Let's pretend that there is an imaginary circle around ADP. ADP. Okay, I know it looks more like an egg than anything else. Okay. And that AB is a tangent to it. And now we need to use information we've already done to work that out. Okay, and it's actually quite easy because we've already, I kind of gave it away in the first part of this question. Right, please go and practice these. The only way that you're going to do well in circle geometry is to practice. Have a great day.